Brian Mast, Republican congressman from Florida, member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, is in focus. Congressman Mast, thank you for being here. Uh, Good to be with you. You know, I mentioned our U.S. military, and of course you have served. And, and you have been around people like that woman in the windowsill, I'm sure, watching them try to win freedom. Yeah, I think, you know, you look at one of the best quotes in our nation's history, and it came from President Reagan, and he said, there's no uh, weapon in the arsenal of men so strong as uh, the, the will of free men and women. And I think that's something that really sums up what we should inspire to the world and what Zelensky is inspiring to the world as we speak. Congressman, uh, on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, I, I would imagine that you're taking a look at what is possible with Putin at the stage, you know, a, a late stage of, of being a dictator. Uh, and, and he's made some desperate moves. What do you make of just militarily the Russians' inability to fill their, their president's wishes and take all these cities immediately? I think uh, you see a divide in the will of the Russian people to wage all-out war on their neighbors, on uh, you know people that you could you could say are, are that close to them in language and so many other ways. This wasn't the will of their people. There's division amidst the military, and, and I think what you need to see from the Foreign Affairs Committee and from those that are in talks in in Belarus and other places is laying it out to Vladimir Putin that. We realize how he began this war, but no matter how long it takes, this is how this war will end. Because of his nuclear saber rattling, there will be a Russian nuclear demilitarization. They will mm. return Crimea. There will be an unconditional surrender to Zelensky and a removal of their troops from Ukraine. And in my opinion, there should be a demilitarized zone along all Russian borders. This needs to be the way that it ends no matter how long it takes so, and maybe add on to that uh, as we see those sanctions going on uh, you know with banks and currency and, and swift uh, we probably need to go out there and let the, the the russian government know that russian energy is not going to be an export that is desired by turkey or germany or anyone mm -hmm. else that has to be a commitment by europe to not use russian russian energy for the next generation otherwise it would be like sanctioning a farmer without sanctioning their crops hmm. real quickly you know the realities of all that though right because you're watching a president and president biden who had to fight mightily to get those countries of nato well 29 others to to work with us on this whole thing how how realistic is that and that demilitarized zone along those lines of of russia i, I mean how could we get all that done is it really possible it's not possible, and I would add to that as well. You need to see Putin stand trial for war crimes as well. But what you see, uh, you know, there was an effort to unify NATO and the EU and Europe across the board mm -hmm. on this, but the greatest unifier uh, of NATO has been Vladimir Putin. And I think you will see because of, of what Lithuania and Latvia and Estonia and Poland and all of these countries now realize they could face uh, you will see, I think, that kind of unification. I hope that is their resolve. And, and again, when you look at the way that they are ramping up their nuclear posture, of which Russia has, mm. has defined very specifically why they would use nuclear weapons uh, in the case of the total collapse of the Soviet Union, or I'm sorry, of Russia, I, I almost called them the you know, Soviet Union, the total collapse of Russia um, in, in case of their nuclear stockpiles being attacked, uh, in the case of attack on their capital. There are very specific reasons why they would lay out using nuclear nuclear weapons. I think Putin is trying to go out there and make sure there's not a unified European front to say enforce a no-fly zone where you don't just have American F-35s, but you have uh, Turkish jets, German jets, right. French jets, UK jets. That's something no that he fly. fears. Absolutely. And, and, and likewise, who would to say that, that Ukraine does not have every reason in the world if they had the capability to counterattack Moscow? If they had that capability, they would have every right to do so. And I think that's why you see Putin doing this nuclear saber rattling. Congressman Mast of the great state of Florida, thank you for your time today. All the best. And always for your service.